Hello everyone, my name is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome to my channel. Today's topic is about COVID-19 face mask detection using OpenCV, Keras, TensorFlow and deep learning. Now before moving ahead with the use case, let's see the model output. On. Let me run the code for live video streams via webcam. I already have the fast, uh, face mask on. So the model should be able to detect it. And uh, let's see, just give me one sec. And okay, I will demonstrate the code part in the in the coming few minutes. So this is how the model should work on live video streams. I already have the face mask on, and I have a headphone on my head as well. So let's see. So you can see the the. We are able to, like the, the model is able to predict, I have a mask on with an accuracy of 99%. If I just remove it slightly, you can see no mask, right? So that's the model output guys. So let's get started. So that's the model output. Let's get started on the use case understanding and approach to solve this problem. This particular session is uh, inspired by Pragya Bhandari. So the code repo of our github uh, will also be shared in the description below so let's begin in this tutorial we will be discussing two different phases uh, one will be the training part where you can see in the, the upper section of the of the image we have built what this, this is going to be the phase one and the second one is going to be the phase two so in phase one, we are going to create, we are going to train a face mask detector. The flow is like loading data sets, training the classifier with Keras or TensorFlow, and then serializing the face mask classifier to disk. Now, if you are not aware of how these kind of image related classifiers work, I have already given one session on CNN in my channel. You can easily go through that particular video and understand the basics of CNN, how convolution works, how pooling works, how flattening works and all those things. You can also get the basics of how neural network works. So that will definitely be helpful for this particular video. So the first part is training your face mask detector, loading data set, training the classifier with Keras uh, TensorFlow, serialize face mask classifier to disk and then loading the classifier in phase two loading the classifier starting the live stream so what happens is from the live stream we detect the faces now how faces are detected using your roi concept i will explain you the uh, what exactly is roi in the next slide extract roi from faces and then show you the final so then apply the classifier to each face roi to predict whether the, the the person is wearing mask or is not wearing mask and then show the final results. So this is all about the entire flow. As you can see, these are the two different data sets which has been used in this particular session. Now, obviously I will be sharing you know, the link of Pragya's repository as well as my repository. So in my repository, I have marked I have also gained some of the extra images, which is not part of Pragya's repository. So initial repository is having like, I think somewhere around 1300 images, 650 around images for each classes with, with mask and without mask. Our goal is to train a custom deep learning model to detect whether a person is wearing or not wearing a mask. That's the main idea of this particular use case. Now, Next topic, I will explain you about how the data set was created. Now, as I have already told you that this particular session is inspired by Pragya Bhandari. She was the initial, uh, I mean, I, I, I referred her repository. There were few more repositories as well. So I, I couldn't build a model from scratch. So I tried to use somebody else repository so that you all can understand the use case. Okay. so. How was face mask data set created? As you can see, these are the techniques being used to create images. Once we are clear with the concepts, then I will jump into the code part and I will show you how the model works. So techniques being used here is taking a normal image of faces, creating a custom computer vision Python script to add face mask to them. 
Okay. So what happens is usually we infer the location of facial structure such as so when we are looking at one image from a computer's point of view what happens is when it look at an image it look out for important features now what are these important features eyes nose orientation of ears beard mustache and all these things are the facial structures location of the facial structures are identified and based on that she has particularly used these features as part of one of the steps if you look at these steps start with an image of a person without mask apply face detection to compute the bounding box location of face extract face region of interest so roi is nothing but region of interest get image of a mask and align it on top of the face properly and repeat these steps for multiple images now what happens visually i have explained it visually as well in the next slide as you can see this is the first image the first step is start with an image of a person without mask so this is a image which has been taken from the selfie camera it could be any image with bike without bike so it could be anything but yeah some person should be there in the image the first target is going to be identifying the face so the second step is applying face detection algorithm to compute the bounding box location of the face as you can see in this particular image we have identified the face so, so here is the bounding box the next step is extracting the face region of interest so what happens is i have zoomed in the image here and this is how the facial instructions so the facial structures are being captured okay this is nothing but the roi extracting the face region of interest roi now once you identify all these features the next step is getting and getting a face mask obviously your face mask image should have a transparent background so i have got a face mask image and i'm trying to implement on top of the face so obviously the face mask has not been directly implemented you can see there is a little bit of tilting which has been done right based on the head orientation so this is how your face mask data set was created in this particular uh, example in this particular session the next slide will talk about the artificially created face mask data set everybody should be clear with this particular point so i will just try to repeat the steps getting an image getting a raw image identifying the facial area creating a bounding box around it from that identifying the region of interest based on the region of interest implementing or getting a new image of a mask without background it should have transparent background so definitely the image will be a png image it won't be a jpg image and then embedding that image as per your facial orientation okay as you can see all these images are artificially being created and the mask is not uh, like it has been tilted based on the head orientation right so this is how artificially the Yeah, the the data sets was created now before moving ahead i will i will show you how the code project structure looks like this is how the, this is how the code project st structure looks like we have requirements.txt train mask detector so these are the two different files which we will be reviewing in this particular session and we'll do a code walk through mask detector dot model is nothing but the model which has been created has been saved so that we don't run a model in front of you all obviously if we run these models it will take more than 24 hours 48 hours to finish based on your processor face detector folder basically has the cafe model and the deploying prototype x txt examples folder you can ignore that was basically created by me and data set you can see data set has two different folders with mask and without mask <coughs> so with mask obviously has all the uh, all the with mask uh, images and without mask uh, it's quite obvious right so we don't have to explain that so these are the two different classes and this is how an image classification model works if again speaking if you are not aware of image classification basic model which is being created using cnn or any other models you should go and have a look at that i already have a video related to cnn model end to end it's almost like 
two and half hours or maybe two hours of entire session where i've explained from the basics of neural networks and then cnn and how to build a model so this is how it works we always have to place a data set folder it it can be any name irrespective of i mean it it can be data it can be data set whatever it is but inside your folder there has to be multiple classes now if you have if you are working on another use case where you have to identify the color of the face mask let's say red blue green white black black five classes so there has to be five different folders here okay black blue something like that so based on these folders the number of classes are defined so based on these two folders this problem is a binary classification problem okay now moving ahead with the code part everybody is clear with the project directory okay okay so we will be reviewing two python scripts detect mask video which is going to be the second one and the initial file which we will be reviewing is the train mask detector so this is how the train mask detector uh, file looks like obviously looks a bit complicated but i will try to walk through entire piece of code so that you understand and implement yourself it's going to be very easy to implement and you can also fine tune your models later on okay so now we have already reviewed our face mask data set let's learn how we can use keras and tensorflow to train a classifier to automatically detect whether a person is wearing a mask or not to accomplish this task we will be fine tuning the mobile net v2 architecture now what now what is mobile net v2 architecture that is the reason i already have this particular blog opened google ai blog i will leave this uh, uh, link in the description below for you to understand more on mobile net but yeah this is the overall architecture how the mobile net works okay now you can see mobile net is nothing but it's a very highly efficient architecture that can be applied to a embedded devices with a limited computational capacity it can be raspberry pi it can be google coral nvidia anything okay if you are interest so i hope you are clear with the model building part now if you are not clear again repeating again and again you have to understand the basics how neural networks work how hidden layers work how cnn models work and then you can understand your mobile net uh, way to architecture okay so let's get started now let's open this particular train mask detector.py as you can as you can see a lot of imports has been used a lot of library has been used so here we are using tensorflow of course but uh, as you already know if you don't want to use tensorflow you can also use keras now the difference between tensorflow and keras is that tensorflow is a framework and keras is a wrapper api on top of tensorflow which uses tensorflow as a backend for an example image data generator you can also as i told you can also use keras dot pre processing image this can also be used but in this piece of code tensorflow is used uh, so that's the reason we you can see all these imports okay a lot of imports these are the different layers which has been used average pooling dropout flattening dense all these layers are explained properly in the cnn video you can go ahead and look at that particular piece of code okay <clears throat> so that's it uh, that's it about the importing package state uh, part so uh, the tensorflow.keras uh, imports allow for data augmentation image data generator is basically used for image augmentation and loading the mobile net v2 classifier building a fully connected fc head pre processing and loading image data so we'll also use scikit learning for binarizing the class labels as you can see label binarizer okay now the concepts of one hot encoding label encoding label binarizer almost are similar let's move ahead and understand the the codes here you can see that uh, initial lr equals to something epox equals to something and bs equals to something so what exactly are these so these are the hyper parameter constants including the initial learning rate number of training epochs and batch size so the batch size is 32 number of epochs is 20 and the 
initial learning rate is one one e minus four. That means one into ten to the power of minus four. Okay, so these are the initial hyperparameter constants which has been used. And the next step is nothing but here I have defined the data array and the labels list for category in categories. You you can see the directory which is used is the data set directory categories we have already defined that this is class a and this is class b and then you can see for category in categories so for each category it is going to the path and it is reading the images that's what it is doing in this particular piece of code okay so looping over the image paths and loading the pre processing images and you can see 224 cross 224 what is that that means it is resizing all the images to 224 cross 224. That's going to be the target size, right? And converting the to the array format and scaling the pixels intensity in the input image to the range of minus one to one. So appending the pre-processed image and associated label to the data and labels list, you can see here. After this, sorry, here. So after this piece of code here, the developer is performing a one hot encoding on the labels. You can see label binarizer has been called and the labels are being converted into the binary formats. So LB dot fit transform labels and labels equals to two categorical labels, right? So one hot encoding our class labels, meaning that our data will be in the format of one and zero. It should be in one dot and zero dot something like that. Okay, binary format. Now after that, what we are doing is we are converting the data into arrays because hidden layers only accept data in the array format. Okay, that's the reason we are converting into arrays. Again, labels are also converted into arrays. After that, what we are doing is we are dividing the data, training and test split into training and test data. So here we have used a 20% of test data and 80% of training data. There is no such thumb rule of using 80-20. You can use 70-30 or 75-25 as per your uh, as per your experience. Okay. So during training, we'll be applying on the fly mutations to our images in an effort to improve generalization. This is basically called as augmentation. You can see constructing the training image generator for data augmentation. Now, what is augmentation? I will try to explain a little bit about augmentation. Again, I have already explained these concepts earlier. Let's say you have an image. Now, augmentation is nothing but recreating images. Okay, now let's say you have 100 images, but obviously when you are creating a model, 100 images might not be a good choice. You have to create 1000 images. Now, how do you do that? The first step is going to be data scraping. If you can scrape it from the web, it's well and good. If not, with the set of 100 records which you have, you can synthetically create the different images. So that basically is called as data augmentation. So let's say I have an image, something like this. And here is somebody is somebody's standing here with a hat. Okay, just an arbitrary value. So what you can do is you can tilt it. Okay you can add noise to this particular image you can make it blurred out you can zoom it and create a new file zoom in zoom out tilting swapping all these techniques can be used zooming rotation all these techniques are basically part of data augmentation okay so we are using data augmentation shear shift and flip parameters as you can see particularly here now now what we are doing is loading the mobile net v2 network ensuring the head fc layer sets are left top so here you can see base model equals to mobile net v2 weights equals to image net now what does that mean that means loading the mobile net with pre-trained image net weights leaving off head of networks now and in, in the next phase is nothing but input tensor equals to so input tensor means I'm defining the input tensor shape equals to something something. So okay, 3D shape. Now obviously an image has to be in a 3D format so that it can identify the RGB format, right? If not, it will be in a grayscale format. And in the next step, 
you can see here constructing the head of the model that will be placed on top of the base model so head model equals to base model dot output so this is basically we are constructing a new fc head and appending it to the base in place of the old head okay you can move ahead so here we are just calling the different layers pooling layer flattening layer so again i will not explain all these things i will leave a comment i will leave the videos link in the description below so that you can understand more about pooling flattening and all these things drop out and dense so the next step is nothing but placing the head fc model on top of the base model so this has already been done i have already been explained looping over all layers in the base model and freeze them so they will not be updated during the first training process so what is happening here is we are freezing the base layers of the network the weights of these base layers will not be updated during the process of back propagation whereas the head layer weights will be tuned now what is back propagation again you can go and get your concepts cleared on all these topics okay now fine tuning is a strategy i nearly always recommend to establish a baseline model while saving considerable time right so we can always fine tune a already created model as well so with our data prepared and model uh, architecture in place for fine tuning we are now almost ready to compile and train our face mask detector model okay so till here everybody should be clear our next step is going to be the compilation of the model step if you remember the cnn classes or if you remember any of your uh, deep learning techniques once you have defined your hidden layers once you have defined your output layers then you start compiling your model right so in order to compile your model you have to also provide an optimizer right so here i am using an adam optimizer uh, with these inputs which have already been defined my learning rate is the initial learning rate my dk is again the initial learning rate divided by epochs so epochs epochs has been defined as 20 right and once i have defined my optimizer then i am compiling the model loss function binary cross entropy because it's a binary classification problem okay optimizer equals to opt i'm just calling my adam optimizer you can also call here adam like this okay or else you can also call rms prop something like this you can do these changes on the go matrix i am using accuracy as my matrix because we are dealing with a balanced data set so accuracy is a good matrix to understand if the the data sets are not, not balanced you can probably do some other techniques like augmentation techniques and all those things apart from accuracy there are other matrix also you can use any of your classification matrix like aoc values or 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 something else uh, maybe recall precision f1 score anything right so i have used accuracy here not me like i have copied this code obviously so uh, the developer has used accuracy now once this is done you can see train the head of the network so the model has been started training here once the model is trained on the training data set you can see model dot fit calling the augmentation dot flow method passing the training data sets step per epoch it is providing it as the length of training data set divided by the batch size okay if the training data set is 1000 and batch size is 10 so that steps per epoch will be 100 as simple as that all these parameters are already created so here the model is being fit once the model is ready we are going to make the predictions on the test data so here we are calling the model dot predict function on the test data okay then we are printing the classification report okay here nothing but for each image in the testing set we need to find the index of the label with corresponding largest predicted probability okay and then i am defining a indexes argmax and then i am printing the classification report so obviously classification report gives us a better understanding on how the recall precision f1 score is based on different classes okay so classification report this is my personal choice of using uh, a classification matrix so classification report you have to always use this in any kind of classification problem okay and uh, 
then you can see the model is being saved as mask detector dot model you can save it like this or you can save it as a pickle file also it's almost the similar technique to save it okay in pickle files maybe you will have to import pickle and that save the model equals to equals to model dot model dot dump uh, let's say something dot pkl okay something like this you have to use this code okay so i have already saved the model you can see model has been saved as mask detector dot model this is how the model has been saved 11 mb model <clears throat> now now our next step is training the model training plot the training and uh, loss training loss and accuracy so you have to run these codes obviously you can run these codes on a higher epoch uh, as well to see how the model behaves but these models has already been run so i'm not showing the code but i will show you the output of this the loss function output let me open this see you can see that uh, the training accuracy and the validation accuracy you can see the accuracy is really good I'm not pretty sure how much percentage it is but I think almost 98, 99% accuracy on the test data. Okay. So it's such a good model, which has been created, obviously uh, could be a scenario that it might be overfitting, but at the time it's, it's looking, it's looking good. We'll not deep dive into this particular model, right? Now, once we are done, given these results, we are hopeful that our model will generalize well to images outside our training and test data sets that's an assumption which we are making from this particular model our next step is going to be implementing our covid 19 face mask detector for video streams okay so for that i will open the detect mask video file and then i will try to run over this particular code Okay, so uh, for, for images, I don't have the code. I, it can easily be created, but I, I, I'll have to search it in Google, I'm not sure. But yeah, it can be easily implemented for images as well. If we, we can do it for videos, it can be easily done for images. Okay, so, so detect underscore mask underscore video has already been opened. The algorithm for this script is the same, almost same. Uh, you can see that video stream has been used. That means from video stream library, what we are doing is we are capturing the video stream from the video stream. It is capturing each and every segment. So what happens is when obviously when you are streaming, multiple images are being rendered, right? So that's how a video stream works. So we will, we will, we also have a function here, detect and predict mask. So we'll try to go through the particular code. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So let's see detect and predict mask. You can see that it is accepting three different parameters, frame, face net and mask net. So let's see from where this particular uh, function is being called and then we will try to understand each one of them. So frame, frame is nothing but video stream dot read. So frame is nothing but it's a frame from our live stream or it could be from any live stream. Okay, so wherever you are running this code, the frame is nothing but the frame from the live stream. What is face net? If you just double click on it, face net equals to cv2 dot dnn dot red net so this is nothing but the model used to detect wherein the image faces are okay you can see the face detector models has been used here and the next one is mask net let's see what is mask net mask net is nothing but load model mask detector so this is the same covid19 face mask classifier model which was created in this particular file okay everybody clear with this so this function is using three different parameters now inside what we are doing is we are constructing a blob detect faces 
and initialize its lists to of which the function is set to return these lists include our faces that is rois or locations and preds so we'll try to go through these codes so i have divided the piece of code into three different segments this is one segment this is two segments let's try to go through the code line by line so in this particular area i'll just try to zoom in in this particular area what's happening is in the inside the loop we filter out weak detections and extract bounding boxes while ensuring bounding box coordinates do not fall outside the bounds of the image okay loop over the detections for i in range of 0 to detection start shape of 2 okay so this is what it is happening next what is happening is we will add face rois to two of the corresponding axes you can see here after extracting the face after extracting the so you can see extract the face roi convert it from bgr to rgb channel uh, channel ordering resize is to 224 cross 224 and pre process it okay so let's go through this code again loop over the detections so the first step is extracting the confidence that is the probability associated with the detection okay then filtering out the weak detections as i told there could be multiple detections right so filtering out the weak detections by ensuring the confidence is greater than a minimum confidence so the confidence is set as 0.5 year that is configurable okay next is computing the xy coordinates of the bounding box for the object and then ensuring the bounding box falls within the dimensions of the frame once that is done the next step is going to be extracting the face roi as i have showed in the model itself extracting the roi and then implementing it so and then converting into the our size that is 224 cross 224 resizing and then pre processing it so once that is done add the face and bounding boxes to their respective lists okay then then you can see only make a prediction if at least one face was detected okay so in your images in your video streams there could be multiple multiple faces that has been detected right because we are already using a face detection algorithm here right right we are already using a face detector model so it in one image or in one video you are able to predict multiple faces right so only when you have identified more faces then this piece of code has is run if length of face is greater than 0 for faster inference we will make batch predictions on all faces at the same time rather than one by one predictions in the above so faces equals to numpy dot array faces data type equals to float 32 and then preds equals to masknet dot predict so masknet is nothing but our calling our model and predict the faces and storing the predictions in the preds for uh, preds uh, uh, preds uh, variable okay and then return a two tuple of the face locations and their corresponding locations okay so this is how it has been written so i think this code is quite self explanatory all the tags has been explained properly so i am just trying to run through this code and explain you further now once that is done next step is nothing but loading our serialized face detector model from disk so proto txt so these are the two variables which has been used to load the model and then we are calling the face net what is face net face net equals to cvv2 dot dnn dot red net and we are calling the deploy prototype and the cafe model okay then we are loading the so these this is just a function and obviously when we run a code obviously all these variables are first initialized and then the functions are called right so function is called somewhere down so when the code is run when the main function is run obviously this happens at the run time immediately and that's where your functions are called and your change code changes are done right i mean the code has uh, code effectively 
code is called effectively. So here what we are doing is initializing the video stream, starting the video stream, loop over the frames from video stream. So grabbing the frame from threaded video stream and resize it to a maximum width of 400 pixels. So this is a very simple piece of code. You can just go through and understand yourself. So frame equals to video stream dot read. So like you read your images. Similarly, we are reading the video stream. I am utils dot resize frame width equals to 400. You can change your width as well based on your uh, your your inputs. Detect faces in the frame and determine if they are wearing a face mask or not. And that's where you are calling your detect and predict mask function. Okay and all these things happen so the idea is clear from video streams when you open a video stream it is reading the video stream it is resizing it to a frame length of 400 and then calling the function and in the function what happens is it converts the video stream into multiple images so it, it basically creates a blob image of multiple images and then try to <coughs> call prediction function on each of the image so a video stream of five seconds could have more than million images as well because images are being captured in milliseconds or or further down micro milliseconds okay so for each image we are predicting it and on the live stream we are getting the output so this is all about the code let's try to run this code and see how the code works <clears throat> let me open my anaconda prompt <clears throat> and then i will call the python space sorry i will call the detector dot so i'll call the detect underscore mask underscore video dot py so let so let's give it a second maybe in 10 15 seconds it will load the model <laughs> starting video stream okay let me grab a face mask as well okay i already have it i had forgotten so you can see no mask and here also there is it is detecting properly as no mask and here it is. let me go back okay so to a certain range it is able to predict I think this range from my screen should be somewhere around uh, somewhere around 2 meters or 2.5 meters and it is doing a good job. Okay, so th that's it. That's about that's it about the model. It is able to predict whether I have the mask on or not. Let me turn off the video. So that's it. And uh, I hope you like the video in case you liked it. Uh, please subscribe the channel and hit the like button and share this video among other friends as well. And uh, a shout out to Pragya Bhandari because of, uh, because I have copied the code from her GitHub repository. I will, as I said, I, have, I will also leave her uh, GitHub repositories link in the description below. I'll also uh, provide uh, the link to my GitHub repository so that you can also check my other repositories. If you are, uh, facing difficulties in any of the topics you can comment down in the video itself if you want a live session on some particular topics because in the next few days i do have some live sessions on time series analysis and ann models and some other topics as well so if based on your based on your interest level if you are looking out for a specific topic which you are not able to understand from the uh, web or some live project implementation i can take up that task as well so whatever possible way I can help, I will try to help you out. 
in case you have any issues if you have any concerns with respect to anything i also have provided my linkedin profile in the description below you can connect me and ask doubts if possible that's it for today's video i hope you got what exactly this use case is all about in case you are looking out for cnn uh, i have already shared the link for that particular video you can go through and understand if you are looking out for power bi tutorials i also have power bi tutorials in my uh, in my channel python is also present and uh, a special announcement i'm going to launch my deep learning uh, playlist in couple of days as well so share this video and share my channel as much as possible guys thank you and have a good day